Hello! In this video I'll convert regular kick scooter to electric one by using hoverboard parts. As a base for this project I bought this foldable kick scooter in local shop for 90 euros. It had 23 cm in front and 20 cm in back PU wheels, front and rear shock absorbers and could hold up to 100 kg of load. Plus it weighs only 5 kg. I found this broken hoverboard for 30 euros on eBay. I already took it apart to check what's wrong with it and found that motherboard was dead. Despite that, battery, both motors and charger is totally fine. I'm very happy with this find because exactly those parts are needed for my build. This hub motor is rated for 350 watts and is 20 cm of diameter, same as current kick scooter rear wheel. Remove the rear wheel with all suspension, because I won't use it anymore. The idea is to make some kind of bracket which could hold the hub motor somewhere about here. So I took 4x4 cm square wood pieces and made this temporarily rear wheel bracket. To make template I used wood, because it's very easy and fast to work with it. This wood dimension was chosen because later on I'll replicate this bracket with 4x4 cm square steel tube. I asked my friend to help me with metal works because I don't have a welder at home. After a lot of measuring, cutting, drilling, welding and sanding, I got this steel bracket ready to mount in place. Primed and painted in matte black. Bracket was designed to use all fixing holes in scooter rear end, so no additional drilling was needed. Wheels was attached with same hoverboard bolts and mounting plate. Great! Scooter again on its wheels. Now let's move on to the electric part. From Banggood.com I got this thumb throttle, LED meter display and 350 watts 36 volts brushless motor speed controller. To fit a bike controller to my needs I had to replace two connectors. This whole sensor connector must be replaced with this one from hoverboard because hub motor have this type of connector too. And next it is needed to replace those two power connectors to one XT60 connector. Cut and solder at XT16 place. With the whole sensor connector I choose another approach. I took speed controller case off, the solder at all wires directly from the board and solder at connector which was cut from the hoverboard. Drill 4 holes in scooter handles fixing mechanism to make mounting points for LCD display. Installed thumb throttle, then moved on to the LCD meter. It had a mount dedicated to round handle, but in my case there is no place for it. So I took mount off and screw directly to the display body. And it fits like a glove. Made one hole for wiring and another for charging connector. From two XT60 connectors, piece of wire and a hoverboard charging connector made this wiring harness. Later on, one XT60 end will be connected to the battery and another one to the controller. To install charging connector was needed to the solder wires, install locking nut, insert wires through the hole and solder them back. Wires from throttle and LCD display was attached with zip ties and later on hide it in scooter body. Through the hole and inside steel tube bracket, wires reached its final destination. Speed controller. I'll use free phase, power, LCD display, throttle, 
hole sensors and self-learning wires. Those wires are managed through the hole in bottom bracket part. All other wires will be hidden in upper bracket part. Connected all connectors and hide it inside steel bracket. Battery. This hoverboard battery is 10S 2P configuration. Removed shrink wrap and insulating paper, which will be reused later. Battery is totally fine and is fully charged. Each hoverboard battery have BMS, battery management system, which is responsible for proper battery charge, self balance, and protecting from overcharged or over discharged. Despite this BMS is quite small and could be reused in my project, I found almost twice smaller one on eBay. Why is important? The idea is to take this hoverboard battery and change its shape to make fit in this groove. Here very nicely sits 5 groups in series of 4x4 18650 cells. So I wanted that BMS will be hided inside too. Talking about reshaping battery, there is nothing special. Disconnected BMS, desolder at all power and balance wires, and rearrange cells to my needed shape. Because I had to cut tabs in few places to make reshaping possible, I used 0.50mm nickel strip and spot welded them back to get same 10S 2P configuration. If you don't have a spot welder, you could use soldering iron. Not the best option, but it will work. Just try to not overheat cells while soldering tabs. This small nickel tab will be used to solder balance wires later on. When all cells was connected again, reused insulating paper and high temperature electric tape to keep isolated each 18650 cells groups from each other. Soldered BMS balance wires that was in new BMS package. More insulation, place BMS in place and soldered power wires regarding wiring diagram provided by BMS seller. Negative terminal goes to BMS B terminal, then from C terminal through the fuse housing was soldered to the negative 18650 terminal. Positive XT60 terminal connected directly to the battery positive side. Final check, does everything was made correctly? Great! Time to mount battery inside the scooter body. As you could see, battery sits almost flush with scooter bottom. I'm very happy with that. Connected self-learning connector, turn LCD display on and the wheel started spinning, but not in the direction. By pressing and releasing throttle, we changed that and now motor spins in the direction. To save it in controller memory, turned off the system and disconnected self-learning connector. Let's check does controller can remember that. And looks it can. Great. Now left to make some kind of battery cover. From cardboard made this rough cover template. Took 2mm of thickness aluminium sheet, cut, bended, hammered it until I got this battery cover. To fix cover in place, drilled bunch of holes on it, regarding that drilled and tapped holes in scooter body and secured with machine screws. Painted in matte black to keep it almost invisible under the scooter. With hot glue and small plastic pieces, cover its steel tube ends to get a clean look. And scooter is finished! At the moment scooter have few issues. Don't have brakes, 
kickstand and we have very small clearance to the ground. It is around 4 cm. It is enough to ride in smooth roads, but in a bumpy road the battery cover potentially could get some impacts. I made the math and calculated that this build cost is under 200 euros. Does it worth? Yes, because I love DIY projects and learned a lot along this build about electric motors, controllers and etc. Let's say this is my first but definitely not the last electric vehicle build. Despite those small issues, scooter runs awesome. I don't try to make the best scooter in the world. The main goal was to check does it possible to use hoverboard parts, some cheap electronics and fit them nicely inside the regular kick scooter. And I think I did it quite well. It could reach 24 km per hour at small downhill and 20 km per hour at the same road running uphill. On flat road, top speed is around 22 km per hour. Keeping in mind that my weight is 90 kg, that's really not bad result. Range per charge is between 15 and 18 km. Depends how fast I'm going. One more great thing, that the scooter is still foldable, portable and weighs only 12 kg. I hope this video was helpful. If you are first time here, please hit that subscribe button for upcoming videos. Thanks for watching.